Okay. GM, GM, welcome to the October Common Stack Review. And boy, do we have a lot go to talk about. Uh, first off, Retro PGF3 is on and we are in it. Retro PGF2 was so huge for the Common Stack. It really kept us alive during this bear market. And uh, because of that influence, we decided to go all in into optimism. And we have spent the entire quarter, uh, really basically since... Uh, since Retro PGF2, working in the optimism space, uh, we have uh, really planted our flag there and on we brought Aragon over. So now you can deploy the old Aragon DAOs into on optimism uh, because we helped make that happen. And then also anyone can now deploy an augmented bonding curve on optimism, which Tam will talk more about soon. So that's the, the biggest highlight, of course, of November. We're so excited for Retro PGF3 to start. Uh, but we also had an epic QF round. Thank you for all the support. Giveth is running QF rounds now. And so we jumped in there and we were able to do, we had a very successful round. Uh, we had 38 contributors uh, raise $275 and are likely to get a couple thousand dollars in matching. So thank you so much for everyone who supported us in Giveth. And with that, I'll just pass it over to you, Tam. Cool. Thanks. Uh, and like Griff said, we are super grateful to Aragon for their generous grant to bring augmented bonding curves and the Aragon tooling to Optimism. I'm going to share my screen now. And so uh, we have an MVP of ABC launch and ABC swap to share. Uh, we have a final uh, push to production that'll happen on Monday, but you can already launch a new DAO with an augmented bonding curve and swap those tokens. It's a completely no code solution. So anyone can, and I could even walk you through launching a DAO. I'll call it um, common stack, the common stack DAO. We can set the voting parameters. So 15% and 15 will leave. We'll make it a one day duration. We we'll call it common stack. Enter a token address. Uh, all right. Never sure what you're going to do with demos, and we'll create a hundred. Um, we will set the reserve to be die, but you could set the reserve to be optimism, USDT, USDC, give. I think we added ETH uh, as well for the um, for the push that's going out on Monday. You change the tributes, and it is just the easiest thing to finally be able to launch an augmented bonding curve without having a full-time developer have to uh, have to edit smart contracts for you. And the second signature, and it's live. It's so super easy to do. So we're really excited. We hope people. Um, start to use it. It is an MVP. We started looking at uh, future releases. Uh, Griff and I and Livia started talking about what this product looks like and what really the problem pain points are that it solves. Not having technical skills to launch an augmented bonding curve, but knowing a lot of the use cases for it. Um, launching a token with no liquidity, of course, augmented bonding curves solves that. And, um, you know, giving investors and founders a way to exit after they join an initial investment. So we're busy working on the um, the version, the next version, the next releases, and we're planning to uh, have a new release somewhere around January 2024. Uh, so if you're in Lisbon and you want to talk more about augmented bonding curves, I'm talking at um, the Ethereum Block Summit. Uh, which is hosted by the Block Lisboa. It's a OG crypto hub and co-working space here in Lisbon. Uh, come talk to me next Wednesday the 8th. And I'll pass to Livia to give us some TEC updates. Thank you, Tim. I would, my, can you hear me well? Okay, so I would like to try sharing a preview of um, stakeholder study. Um, can you see it? 
Yep, we see okay. it. Oh, I love it. Okay. It looks beautiful. So this is very much just a, we, we, you know, fresh. We just started. There's a lot of this content that is getting um, subtracted from here. <laughs> so this looks huge right now, but it's not going to be this big. So it's just to share like our progress and how this is looking so far. Um, we have mostly of the study written and we are in this phase of editing, bringing it down, uh, making it more concise. And soon uh, you have your token engineering polar study to answer the question of what is token engineering or at least uh, hoping to get the information that came from the 41 participants we interviewed. And I'll pass to Ivy. Or back to you, Tim. Sure, I can take it. I realized that I also forgot to show the swap page. So the launch is really exciting because anyone can launch their augmented binding code, but then what do you do with it? The token that we just created was for the common stack DAO. Uh, and so you can see that you can immediately start uh, start uh, swapping against the reserve asset that you chose. And I'm just gonna go into some more updates from uh, the TEC and then I'll pass back to you, Griff. So uh, the Token Engineering Commons has talked about um, migrating to Optimism Chain. And since the end of September, we had advice process going for this planning and the TCAN and coordination team have been um, working through the uh, the necessary uh, requirements in order to do so. And the Tumeric Labs team, Sam, um, Jordi and Pinglu have been working through the technical migration plan. And now we have a much um, more detailed plan for how to get between here and all of the different votes that we need to do, all of the different forum posts, documentation updates, um, smart contract, um, you know, moving TC tokens out of smart contracts. Uh, everything now is in this very concise plan, which is um, which targets us for a mid-December migration completion. The TEC community still has to vote on the plan, which will happen in uh, maybe about two weeks. Once we have uh, the, the technical feasibility study completed, we could present it to the TEC community and then we can vote to migrate to the TEC based on that plan. Um, also, the Token Engineering Commons just launched the uh, Token Engineering Grants on Gitcoin Grants Round 19. Uh, Major thanks to Ocean who sponsored this uh, this uh, this uh, matching. There's 25k uh, QF matching available to all the token engineering projects in this round. And I'd like to give a really warm thank you to Jeff, Vasily, Patty, and Phil H, who are the TEC grants program advisors and have been working with NT and myself to um, to refine the criteria and will be doing evaluations for acceptance into this Gitcoin grants round. And I'll pass to you, Griff, to talk about reserve asset change. This is a big one. This is a big one. So part of the TC migrating to optimism, uh, we have an opportunity to easily change our reserve. And actually, uh, in in we will we will the TEC will be one of the first big users of the work that we have deployed on optimism, and we're debating hey what what should the reserve asset be right now it's X die, and um it could be a stakes die derivative uh, where it's earning interest or. Uh, we could go full on acceptance of the four year pattern and pray that we are entering bull market soon and peg the TC token to ETH by collateralizing uh, the, the TC's reserve currency, making the TC's reserve currency some kind of ETH derivative. And we all basically agreed that it would be better to use uh, an ETH that's earning interest so that it, it would be beating the price of ETH. And the debate rages on, should it be staked Ether or Rocket Pool ETH? 
And it's a tough, it's a tough debate. And there is uh, more context happening in the forum uh, there, you know, about how we got to even this point where it's basically, is it staked ETH, rocket pool ETH, or some other staked ETH derivative? Uh, and YGG made an excellent breakdown of hours of discussion that is very worth reading. Uh, and we have uh, only two votes on the forum, uh, one for Rocket Pool ETH and one for Staked ETH. So I'd be really curious to see what more people in the forum say. Uh, but on Twitter, it is uh, pretty dominant here. It is Rocket Pool ETH for the win. No, uh, no debate. So there's four hours left in this poll. So you never know. It could change. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting. Uh, big move for the TEC. And uh, along those lines, though, we also have a big move for the common stack. I, I, I guess I should really just, oh, no, Olivia, Olivia just left, left our call. Um, so, well, maybe we'll do ecosystem updates and we'll bring it back to, uh, to the big update with Olivia afterwards. Uh, oh, right. She's here. Uh, Olivia, uh, do you want to uh, make the announcement? Um, yeah, I'm very, very emotional to say that I am resigning from Common Stack, but that I will remain as an advisor and to share my immense gratitude to this team and to everything I learned here, and that I hope I will digest all these learnings and understand what are my next steps that still um, feel unknown and that I'm deeply committed to the work that happens here and that I hope I can continue to do in their way. Yeah, uh, well, we're sad to see you go, but happy to see you stay at the same time. Uh, the, you know, common stack has been sticky, Jeff still, uh, has it uh, still gives presentations for the common stack and and is a, a trusted advisor and I'm pretty sure you will be too for many many years uh, and who knows maybe we'll end up bringing you back when we get some cool projects uh, but yeah so well let's all give our love to Livia on her next journey in the crypto sphere or outside of the crypto sphere we'll see uh, what happens and but we'll I'm sure we'll be seeing you around. Uh, yeah, and with that, maybe I'll pass it over to Tam to give some ecosystem updates. Sure, there's two things that I want to share. And okay, so I always have to make sure I get the right window. The first is uh, I really want to point out this initiative by the Bonding Curve Research Group. Um, they had Mark Richardson, who is the Bangor and Carbon lead, give a four part seminar. Uh, four-part seminar on bonding curves. Uh, I was able to attend the first one. There are recordings available. So um, for those interested in how use cases for bonding curves, origin of bonding curves, mathematical details of bonding curves, I can't recommend this series enough. And then last, uh, we were asked to join, uh, Ronald from Positive Blockchain asked us to join a, a working group for uh, the best in class for positive initiatives for blockchains. It is um, a initiative by the UN to sort of align the blockchain ecosystem with the broader efforts of UN agencies uh, and supporting UN charter views, uh, values and SDGs. So uh, there was an initial um, best in class criteria and process uh, which is very informal, and the purpose of this working group is to make suggestions for how to improve the criteria and the process and have a list of the best in class blockchain projects so that politicians and um, you know uh, administrators and civil organizations can have something to point to of projects that are actually making a real impact in the world and not just the FTXs that dominate the news. And Griff, I'll pass to you now, right? Sure, I can. Uh, well, actually, no, let's throw it over to Ivy. I think Ivy is going to talk trusted seed and region score. Yes, uh, thanks, Griff. Yeah, I have a few updates from trusted seed. Uh, yeah, first, um, we're happy to share that um, Beyond Conference is back 
And um, so registration just opened uh, last Monday and it's open to anyone. Um, but this time our big focus is on um, uh, the new paradigm of uh, community fostering and uh, building uh, region alliances. Uh, something different but that, that we're doing in this conference is the formation of uh, small dynamic circles um, where we will kickstart um, some region conversations and collaborations on potential region projects before we start the uh, core sessions. Um, the conference will run for two months. Uh, in November, we will be focused on the circle buildup and uh, preparations um, where we encourage the participants to uh, engage with uh, each other and uh, make alliances. And then in December, uh, we will be uh, hosting the four sessions and the demo days and also writing a post event report. Um, so if you're a part of the DAO or you're just some or you're just someone looking to make more region friends, um, check out the unconference and uh, and sign up. And the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, uh, some updates on region scores. So like common stack uh, region scores also in the retro PGF3. Um, so region score was initially proposed to uh, OP Citizen House um, to help them uh, in qualifying um, new members through a transparent and data-driven approach. Um, some of the uh, major contributions uh, include the uh, yeah analytical uh, scoring uh, model and uh, open source website and um, so uh, uh, and the attestation minting on uh, optimism network um when it comes to uh, uh, to its impact um yeah we're happy to say to, to report that we've identified some uh, potential candidates for the citizen house uh, because um some of the scores of attested uh, attested attested users are um uh, comparable to uh, current OP delegates. So um, any funding we'll potentially receive from the Optimism community will um, uh, allow us to add more uh, features and refine our uh, scoring uh, models. So we're calling all retro PGF badge holders to uh, yeah, include us in your uh, voted project. Uh, and then just a few more updates on region score. Um, when you mint your attestation, you can now share it on Twitter. And also, uh, Trusted Seed is considering in, uh, is exploring uh, to integrate a uh, region score in the uh, in the in our matchmaking program and is also in the uh, membership uh, process. So I'll share more updates on that when there are more uh, definite details. So that's all for me, and I'm passing it back to Griff for other ecosystem updates. Yeah, and as you know, there's a lot going on in the Giveth Galaxy, which Common Stack is definitely a major planet of. Uh, so, uh, yeah, first off, ENS Small Grants was huge for Giveth. Uh, they got first place, which is five Ether, which is epic. Uh, also, Pairwise and Metagame Bright ID Unitap, uh, and you know, all made it. It's very cool, very good to see. Uh, and Common Stack didn't make it. We were close. But uh, but didn't quite couldn't quite get over over past it. Another big funding stream for public goods groups in in uh, in in our ecosystem was Octant. Uh, Giveth was able to score thirteen point eight ETH, and so was uh, and also Praise and uh, uh, Pairwise both also were able to uh, rack in some some money along with Glow Dollar. And the big winners were of course Rokey and Protocol Guild. Uh, but it's good to see like Tor make it in there and some other like and onion down like just interesting projects making it in uh these crypto first uh kind of public goods funding streams another update praise has a lot of action these days in developer dow which is really interesting uh you know usually it's giveth general magic and tc really top in the charts here but it's great to see developer dow and optimism and dap node really start to uh go in for praise as well as uh some new new projects so lots of people are starting to use praise it's really exciting and uh it's it's cool to see this growth uh also, Giveth and General Magic and, and really the Giveth Galaxy is going to have a huge event in Turkey, uh, renting out a hotel and having a few days calling it Give Connect. There will be uh, basically a, a three-day unconference and some team outings and, and all of that the week before Dev Connect. So 
definitely if you are in the area and you want to participate it's totally cool you can drop in and uh, it's going to be mostly internal giveth galaxy things but you know we're a public goods project and very open so if you happen to be in istanbul and you want to just see the inner workings of giveth you are totally welcome to join our our uh, unconference also uh in the ecosystem uh, the whole giveth galaxy has really like uh planted the flag along with the common stack in the in the optimism ecosystem there's no uh l2 that's more aligned with with what we're trying to do with impact equals profit than optimism and so uh the general magic and giveth have uh joined forces to actually create a retro pgf community so definitely follow them on twitter this is the best place to get updates on optimism cool memes and what's going on in retro pgf so this is the spot for sure uh we're also creating in an, a really epic voting tool for if you're a badge holder, uh, then you can use this tool to actually create lists and organize your lists it, for all the optimism. We uh, Pairwise has uh, kind of created different categories to make it easier for people to compare individuals or groups that are in the developer ecosystem. And maybe you want to um, see the different, you know, you, then we made little subgroups and you can come in here and instead of trying to figure out how much goes to who, uh, we make you uh, in one big long thing, you can kind of just say, well, gravity DAO or optimism guide, which one, which one had more impact on optimism, right? Uh, and if you don't know, you can, you don't know what these are. Of course, you need to do some uh, more reading up on them. We are importing all of the data that, that is in the um, project's descriptions right here. So you can read them right there and you can really understand who is better, who is worse. Uh, and at the end here, I'm going to just click through, but at the end, you can get to the, uh, the last page and actually, uh, edit your submission. And what's really interesting with Pairwise, in my opinion, is that when you submit the list, you end up, um, you end up um, creating a list that is set for these 20-ish projects. And I create that list, Tam will create that list, Mitch will create that list, Breaches will create that list. And then everyone can kind of choose who to import from that list? Who do they want to judge those 25 projects? And it'll be a really nice delegation system. So Pairwise is really exciting for all the projects up there. And just a really quick rehash of which projects in the Giveth Galaxy are out there. We have the Giveth House. Uh, many of you have probably stayed at the Giveth House, so don't miss them if you're a badge holder. Giveth, of course. Uh, and we have uh, Kai, Gele Royale, uh, who made the bridge bot between Discord and Telegram uh, that many badge holders use. We have public goods grant uh, management by GM, uh, a weekly call that helps people navigate the optimism uh, grant system. Uh, and of course, we have us, the common stack. Don't want to miss them. Uh, we also have TEC uh, is, is representing there. Soon we'll be migrating to optimism. Uh, Breaches, who's, uh, who's been a, a powerhouse in the optimism community and uh, helping the Giveth Galaxy as well navigate uh, the chaos that is optimism. Uh, we have Pairwise, which I just showed you in depth. And we have uh, the Retro PGF community uh, running that Twitter space. We have Regen Score and we have Praise. Uh, there's probably even a few more that I missed. So, uh, just look out for us in retro PGF and look out for us in December because if no, or sorry, in November and December, because if October is any, any sign of things, we have a lot more to bring. Uh, so uh, with that, we we're long enough. So I think I'll just end it there. Uh, thank you all for watching our community call, our, uh, our review call for, for October. And thank you, Livia, for years of service in the common stack. Thank you so much. We're going to miss you horribly in these calls. Uh, praise. Praise Livia. Uh, uh, praise Ivy. Praise Tam for an incredible November. Uh, bye, everyone.